Monica with BeWildMomsen.com and today I'm going to be showing you a very large summer farm to table grocery haul. Before we dive into the farm to table grocery haul, I wanted to share an Amazon grocery haul that I recently wrote about on my blog at theduvalhomestead.com. It's for those times when you need to eat something nourishing and high quality, but you don't have time to make it yourself. My rule of thumb is it's always better to have something high quality at your fingertips rather than stopping at a fast food store if that's the only thing you can do. So I share my tips and some more info on the blog. I'll leave a link below. I thought I would film this video today because I went to the store like I normally do and I happened to buy a lot of food because it's kind of getting warmer here which means the farmers in our area are able to grow a lot more and sell more at the local stores even if they're not directly in our area we have certain parts of our state that get warmer earlier like if you head four hours east those farmers can make fruit and whatnot way before we can over here. So I noticed that the grocery store was very prolific with their summer foods. And one thing I like to do is shop with the season. And so whatever food is really in season at the time, I like to buy that. And actually I really crave the seasonal food. So for example, in the winter time, I like squash, butternut squash soup and pumpkins and pies and beef stew and roast and I don't cook any of that stuff in the summertime. Instead in the summertime we like to do fish and vegetables and fruit and just lighter food. We also like to cook a little bit less I guess you can say difficult meals, meaning in the winter time I will do a soup that I prepare in the morning with onions and a lot of chopped vegetables and kind of more labor that goes into that kind of soup or maybe a roast or a pot pie, but in the summertime, it's so hot here, and we actually don't have air conditioning in our house, but it's so hot that we don't like to really spend that much time cooking. So we like to buy kind of more, I think it's Mediterranean food, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that means that you have one protein, one vegetable, and then one carbohydrate in your meal. So for example, steak, with asparagus and corn. And you take those three things and you throw them all on the grill and that's your meal. And so we don't actually do a lot of cooking like following recipes or anything. I haven't really followed a recipe or made a recipe of my own own in a while because everything we've been making has been a la carte. One meat, one vegetable, and one carb. And so that's kind of how we eat in summertime. So anyway, that's what I had in mind when I was doing this grocery haul. And it's very hot here right now, so I need to get to putting these groceries away. So I'm going to show you what I got before it all starts to get warm. Okay, so I'm gonna start with some of the dry foods because I actually don't buy a lot of dry food in the middle of the grocery store. So they say if you ever want to buy really healthy food to shop around the perimeter of the grocery store. So like your produce and your meats, vegetables, and you avoid the middle because the middle is all packaged food, right? So I, in general, I do that, except for the few items that you need in the middle, right? Like peanut butter or whatever. So I'm gonna start with the dry items. So this is actually cereal. Now, we never buy cereal. But in the summertime, sometimes if we want something after dinner, we'll reach for cereal and milk just because it's light, it's cool, um, or a snack, it just kind of cools you down. I'm very picky about cereal, and the reason is because most cereal has a lot of sugar in it. It also can contain oils like canola oil. One of my goals whenever I go shopping is to avoid canola oil. It has the bad kind of fats for you that actually can increase inflammation in your body. That can lead to more problems. So we choose to only eat avocado oil or olive oil or coconut oil. So I looked at the ingredients of this and this is actually called One Degree Organic Foods. I've actually never heard of this company before, but it's got gluten-free organic sprouted whole grain oats, organic sprouted garbanzos, organic cane sugar, organic tapioca starch, unrefined oil, and a vitamin E. And that's it. So whenever there's five ingredients or less and you can pronounce all of them, it's usually a pretty good buy. So this is actually just a snack Especially for me being pregnant, I snack a lot, so not a bad idea. I have three bags of chips here. Like I said, my goal when I buy chips is to avoid canola oil. This brand here called Boulder Canyon has avocado oil chips. This is an avocado oil chip. It is malt, vinegar, and sea salt, a really good flavor, and it's just a snack. My husband and I both work from home, so we're home all day, eat all three meals a day here. So we need a lot of food. And our goal with the shopping trip is to not go to the grocery store for at least another week. 
and so we also don't really eat out at all. And so this is supposed to kind of fill the need for everything you would normally do during your work week and the weekend and be enough for that. I also like to get some tortilla chips. Now I haven't found a good tortilla chip that doesn't use canola oil. This one uses sunflower oil, which is kind of the next best thing. I bought these because I plan to do some tacos and I know my husband will like to have chips and salsa and we like to have chips and salsa, so that's what we're gonna do with that. And this chip is from Beanfields. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but they make their chips out of bean, which is really nice because there's protein in them. So as opposed to a tortilla chip, which is basically just carbs and flour, which turns into sugar eventually. So you can't really have tortilla chips as a snack on their own. You have to have them with something or else you're just eating blank carbohydrates in your body and that doesn't feel good. I like to have these chips because these are made with bean, so there's protein in them. So if you have just these as a snack alone, you feel a lot better, you're more sustained because there's protein. There's four grams of protein in about 11 chips, which is a lot for a chip. So really good snack for pregnancy just because I always try to get extra protein and you need to have at least 80 grams of protein a day when you're pregnant, if not way more. So that's what I go for. The other dry items, I get organic hibiscus tea. I also get a chamomile lavender tea. I drink tea every night during my pregnancy. And so I got some tea. I got this pectin. This is my first time buying pectin. I plan to make some jams this summer and put them in jars and can them. So you need some pectin for that. So I'm excited to try that out. Another dry item are organic cocoa nibs. If you don't know what these are, they're basically raw organic cocoa and you can put them on yogurt or on top of smoothies and they're a little sweet but they're not artificially sweetened so it's just kind of a really fun way to spice up anything like cereal it's kind of like a, something you could put in granola or something like that we like to put them on top of our smoothies all right not many more dry items like i said everything is so fresh right now but these are little packets they are probably baby food they're from peter rabbit organics and i actually love them so there's ma banana, mango, orange, strawberry, banana. They're a fruit puree, basically. This one is apple, pea, and spinach, pear, carrot, and beet, and apple, carrot, and squash. And the ingredients are just organic, pure apple puree for whatever fruit I just mentioned. And it's actually just a really great snack. So it's one of my kind of pregnancy snacks on the go. Um, it's probably great for kids. I haven't tried it on any kids yet, but I can tell you as an adult, I really like them. Okay, I think this is my last item in the dry section, and that is coconut water. And this is something I drink at night. It's got some nice electrolytes in it and makes me feel good being pregnant, especially on during hot days. This is just unflavored sparkling water. My husband and I both like to drink sometimes sparkling water during the day. Okay, so next we have a couple of lunch items that I just picked up because sometimes my husband and I are both working during the day and we don't have a lot of time to make lunch. And by make lunch, I mean prepare something from scratch and then cook it, eat it, and then clean it up. Because for me, that would take about maybe two to four hours total, depending on what it was. And so if I have to work that day, um, we will just put something in the oven. So this is a chicken pot pie, and we're really lucky that our grocery store prepares these for us and we can just buy them. So they are from scratch from the local grocery store. So they're not branded or anything or frozen, they're fresh and the ingredients are just chicken, onion, carrots, peppers, mushrooms, butter, flour, chicken stock, thyme, cream, peas, corn, potatoes, parsley, egg. So it's super pure. There's nothing in this that I don't know or that I couldn't make myself. So my rule of thumb is whenever I can't make something myself, I buy it from someone who basically did make it themselves. Another kind of ready to prepare food is this ravioli. Now this is butternut squash ravioli. And I actually have a recipe for butternut squash on my blog in an ebook, and I plan to share it on my blog at some point. But you can make homemade ravioli very easily. However, if you don't have the time, which usually we don't um, during the week, I will just put these in. And these are made fresh at the grocery store, and I like it because it's an easy way to get butternut squash in our diet during the summertime, which is normally something we get a lot in the winter. But I still want the benefits of it, so. We like to have that ravioli. I picked up some eggs. Now these are farther away from us than I would like. Usually I pick up eggs that are just from down the street chickens that we know down the street at a farm, but they were actually closed today. So I had to pick up these ones, which are still local in our state, but I don't actually know the chickens, which I've gotten very picky with my eggs because I eat so many. I really like them to come from chickens that we actually know. I have this milk here. We buy just 
lightly pasteurized milk and not the ultra pasteurized kind because I use this to make kefir. So I try to buy local milk and I try to make sure it's not ultra pasteurized, which means it doesn't last as long, but it's way better for you because there's at least more of that good bacteria in it that would normally be there if it was raw milk. We actually do have raw milk available. It's not available at the store I was at today, but we can get that in our area as well. I buy this cream. This is another local cream that's to us, you know, lightly pasteurized again, trying to do that with all of our dairy products because it's a little better for you. Not as good as raw, but better than the ultra pasteurized stuff you find at the store. If you ever see that your milk is good for like three months, if they say it expires in like two or three months, it's probably so pasteurized that there's nothing in that milk that is really benefiting you, which is probably why a lot of people are lactose intolerant and whatnot because good bacteria is all washed away in the pasteurization process. So try to um, keep our food as pure as possible. I pick up this butter. I like to buy the Kerrygold butter. It is grass-fed from grass-fed cows. Pretty much only buy dairy products from grass-fed animals, cows. This is my grass-fed Greek yogurt. This is also something that we can make from scratch, but I just choose not to right now, especially in the summertime, because I'm just hot and pregnant, and I just really appreciate things that are already made if they are to the standard that I'm okay with. So this is what I eat before bed. We have yogurt before bed a lot for dessert or during the day as a snack or breakfast. I always buy a lot of lemons and limes because I love putting lemon in my water or my tea. We can make cocktails with limes or I can make a mocktail with sparkling water and lime. <laughs> I buy a lot of avocados. In fact, these are gonna get really ripe because it's warm, so I gotta put them in the fridge, but we have avocados as a snack or I make guacamole. Guacamole is one of those things that I actually really don't like buying from the store because our guacamole is so much better when it's homemade. I buy these little tiny potatoes because at some point we'll do a roast chicken and I like to put the potatoes on the bottom of the chicken. I had to buy some more maple syrup. I got some honey and this is uh, local honey. Um, again, a little farther than I'd like. We can get honey from down our street, but it's just a matter of picking it up and I didn't have the time to stop there today, or at least I didn't. And so this honey's from a little farther away, but it's a raw unfiltered honey and I'm really happy because we can buy, at our grocery store, we can buy all local stuff within a couple hours to us. And so, although ideally I would like to buy things from the farmers that are literally in our neighborhood, this is as good as I can get if I only have time to do one stop. This is new, this is a fig orange spread. I'm excited to try this. I might put this on pizza or, I don't know, toast. Have never bought this before, but figs were just sounding good for some reason. Um, I'm really excited about these. I found these yellow corn tortillas at the store now. I hate buying tortillas from the store because there's always canola oil in them and random ingredients. And I, I can make tortillas on my own. I love making tortillas. The problem with making tortillas at home is you have to heat up your cast irons really hot. And when it is 85 degrees in our kitchen, the last thing I wanna do is heat up cast irons hot and flip tortillas for an hour <laughs> or half hour, however long it takes. So in the summertime, I cut the corner and I buy tortillas. Now, luckily I found these ones. They do not have any oil in them. They are just flour, basically the same ingredients as I would make them myself. So again, very thankful that I have a grocery store next to me that sells that kind of thing. I also got some salsa. This is random, but I got this Dr. Bronner's Baby Castile Soap because I'm gonna be making some baby soap products. We are gonna have a baby in a couple months, and so I wanna make sure I have any soap products I need, and I will just make it myself with some pure Castile soap. So I've heard Dr. Bronner's is really good, and so I'm excited to try that. Okay, so moving on to the produce section. This is really fun. I had some great finds today. So first, cherry tomatoes are always a good idea on salads, snacking, pizza. I got two bunches of beets. These beets look so beautiful and so fresh and I'm excited to make them. I'm actually gonna share a recipe on my blog and YouTube channel about how to make beets. So if you've ever wondered how to make them correctly, I will be sharing that. I always pick up some herbs. This is cilantro. Oh no, this is parsley. Parsley and cilantro are pretty interchangeable for me. I like both of them. So I pick up either parsley or cilantro every week and I just play with it throughout the week. I got two heads of kale. This is our favorite salad. We have kale every night. And I'm very picky about my kinds of kale. In fact, I'm gonna be having a video, I think, in fact, I will have just posted a video, I think, before this video about how to cook kale flowers. We have a kale garden as well, so. Moving over here, we have asparagus. So again, I don't meal plan. I don't know exactly 
how I'm gonna make these and when, but I know that for every meal, we always have a meat, a vegetable, and then a side. So that's why I have all these vegetables, so that we have options, whatever sounds good. So I got a zucchini, asparagus. These are all items that uh, my husband, John, can put on the grill, but if he doesn't, you can also put them in the oven. So we kind of switch off between doing that, but when it's so nice out, we like to just grill, because then we can eat outside and it's just so much nicer. Okay, I got a whole bunch of fruit. I have these peaches that look fantastic, and these apricots. I haven't had apricots for so long, over a year probably, and so I'm really excited to dive into those. And anything we don't finish fruit-wise, I always buy a lot of fruit because if you don't finish it, you can just put it in the freezer as the black bag and then put it in your smoothie. So we make smoothies with fruit in the morning anyway, so bought all this fruit. We'll eat it as snacks, and if something is starting to go bad, we just throw it in the freezer. Okay, I always pick up strawberries and blueberries. This is one of my favorite fruits, and I believe these are not local. These are the only things I don't have locally right now, and I think it's just because it's too early in the summertime. So once these are local, we'll be buying them as well. But in the meantime, these are organic, and they are really good, so we buy them. I got a bag of snap peas. These are so fun to have as snacks and put on salads. Again, cool food. The theme for this shopping trip was keeping cool because it's so hot here right now. Moving over here, I have a bundle of carrots. One thing I love about carrots is that they just don't go bad for a long time. So I'll keep these in the fridge and put them on our chicken or have them as snacks. I always buy a few apples and I change the variety every time I go to get different kinds of apples. Apples aren't technically in season until later this fall, but um, I like to eat apples because they're so healthy for you, and so we put them in our smoothies and have them as snacks. <laughs> if you notice the pattern, it's smoothies and snacks. Um, I got three pears, which is something that I don't normally get, but pears are very nutritious for you. Again, something I can chop up and put in smoothies or have a snack. My mom always told me when I was a kid, to eat different colors of the rainbow. And so I always, when I'm shopping, I think, oh, look, that's purple, let's get that, or that's red or green, yellow. And so I think it's important to have a big variety of food. So over here, I'm gonna show you some meats that we got. We got two packages of salmon. Salmon is finally becoming in season here, which is one of our favorite things to eat. It's so good for you. We have it fresh and wild. We never buy farm-raised salmon, we always buy wild. And even if it's previously frozen, it's still pretty darn good, but fresh is best if it's not too expensive. It can get very, very expensive, so I try to keep it reasonable. In the late summertime, when the salmon are actually coming in our area and swimming in our area, it's just so prolific that we eat so much salmon. I also bought some pre-marinated meats, which is one of the best parts about the grocery store we go to is that they have these, so we, I got these lemon garlic chicken wings, herb lamb patties so we can make lamb burgers, and then beef stuffed peppers. These are things that we can make for lunch or dinner and throw them on the grill. And I forgot to get hamburger buns, so that might be something that I have to make from scratch, which is fine. I love making sourdough hamburger buns. In fact, hamburger buns are another thing that always have canola oil in them. I don't know if you ever go to the store and look at the ingredients, even if they're organic, it's still canola oil and I just try to avoid that one ingredient. So I will just make my own for that. I always buy bacon because we love to have bacon on Saturday mornings. I also have a whole roasted chicken in the fridge right now that I did not buy today, I bought it yesterday. Okay, we are almost done. In this bag I have frozen items and I need to get this in the freezer so I'm gonna go through this quickly. But I bought organic fruit, frozen fruit. So pineapple chunks, mango chunks, and raspberry chunks. Um, we don't have mango or pineapple locally. I can get it at the store, but both of those fruits are, they take a while to peel and cut, and it's just not really in my day-to-day -day routine. So I like to buy them frozen because I put it in our smoothie. I also buy raspberries frozen because when you buy raspberries fresh, they don't last nearly as long as other berries do, so it's just easier to buy them frozen. And then I have some ice cream, and this is kind of a treat for this week because it's so hot. But this is actually a vegan ice cream, and I love the ingredients. It's coconut milk, cane sugar, cashews, cocoa butter, gluten-free oats, coconut oil, brown sugar, vanilla bean, vanilla extract, nutritional yeast, and sea salt. So nothing in here that I don't recognize or that I couldn't make myself. In fact, I actually think we will pull out the ice cream maker and start making ice cream because we can, but I wanted to buy these just in case we didn't have time. And I thought I'd show you this over here, which I didn't buy from the store. I bought this from Amazon, but this is a six-pack of Jovial Einkorn pasta. 
So we don't eat that much pasta in the summertime because it's more of a cold weather thing, but we do still eat it. So I'll make like a different kind of pasta, not a red sauce pasta, but a garlic pasta or something like that. And we try to only eat einkorn because this grain is so much healthier. It's lower in gluten and higher in protein. And so I buy it from Amazon and it um, is delicious. It's not gluten free, it's not whole grain. It is regular all purpose, but the grain is called einkorn, which is an ancient grain. I have more information about einkorn on my blog and I'll try to link that below. All right, well that's it. I better get going putting this into our fridge because it's so hot that we're gonna start having things melt here. So. Thank you so much for watching and joining me for this grocery haul. I hope it inspired you to get some farm to table ingredients and just don't be scared to buy some ingredients that you've never cooked with before, like a beet or kale or asparagus or a local dairy product. You will really enjoy buying food that is local to you because it is made from the animals that are grazing off of the grass near you and it just is so much better for you and it tastes delicious too. If you are brand new to my page, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and like on Facebook. Every week I post new farm to table recipes and homemade natural living from our homestead here in Duval. I will get going on making these beets and I will film that for the YouTube video, so watch out for that. Thank you so much for stopping by the Duval Homestead.